Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be talking about the books that are on my Christmas wish list, so let's just get right into it. So I thought this video would be kind of fun to just give you ideas maybe if you're looking for books to put on your wish list or if you're shopping for someone who is a big romance reader or maybe someone who just wants to get into romance books. I think actually every single one, actually that's not true, almost every book on this list is a romance book but that's just me and what I like obviously and so I'm just gonna go through the ones that I'm asking for. A lot of them are books I've already read this year and really really loved so I want to get physical copies of them so I've asked for them for Christmas. So let's just get to the books. So the first set of books on my list is the Eden series by Devney Perry. I've asked for all the books that are out so far. So Christmas in Quincy, Indigo Ridge, Juniper Hill, and Garnet Flats. If you know these books, they are super, super popular right now. They are independently published, I'm pretty sure. So they are ones that like may not be on someone who's like a casual romance reader's radar. But they are so so good and definitely good ones if you're just looking to get into romance because the first full-length novel, Indigo Ridge, the novella does go before it, Christmas and Quincy, which is obviously very cute for Christmas. But Indigo Ridge, the first full novel, is sort of like a romantic suspense, I guess, kind of, but like not really. It's got sort of like a mystery plot line to it that's kind of going on alongside the romance. I personally really enjoyed both plot lines, which is why I really really loved this book. Juniper Hill, the second book, is my favorite book. It's basically a series of small town romances that all follow a different sibling in the Eden family. So the first two books are about two of the brothers and then the third book is about one of the sisters. The first little novella, Christmas and Quincy, is not about one of the family members. It's just about an influencer, I believe, that comes to their hotel for Christmas one year. And I personally just really, really love this series. I gave the first two books five stars and I gave Garnett Flats, I think, four stars maybe. I didn't love that one as much, but I did really, really love the first two. And so I am really excited to see where the series goes and I want to get the first ones that are out, obviously, and we'll continue to collect the rest as they are released. Next is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I have also read this book, really, really loved it. I also really love the new pink cover they have out for this one. It is super, super cute. I really, really love it. And so I'm glad I didn't buy the orange cover because I was never really a fan of that, which is kind of why I didn't buy the book. But I do really love this new cover, so this one is definitely on my list. You also may notice in this video, I have an unboxing, it's a very very large unboxing that is either going up before or after this, at some point in December it'll be up, and you'll notice a lot of the books on this list are in that unboxing, and I will explain why in that video, but I just wanted to sort of clarify that like I know that I already sort of have some of these books, but that is why, because I don't know which of these videos is going to go up first, but I just wanted to sort of clarify that for anyone who watched that and is now watching this kind of being like, what the heck if that one did go up first? Because like I said, I don't know which order I'm going to do it in. Next is Everything For You by Chloe Lise. This is the most recent Bergman Brothers book. This is book number five, I believe, and this is my favorite one in the series so far. This is actually probably my favorite book of the year. I gave this one four and a half stars when I read it, but honestly it was a five star. Like I've definitely moved it up sort of like mentally. It's a five star read for me. I loved this. It had every single good trope that you could possibly want in a book. It's age gap, it's enemies to lovers sort of, it's got an only one bed scene, their neighbors, their scrumpy sunshine. Like literally this book is just so so good. It's between two guys who are on the same soccer team and they end up sort of becoming co-captains with each other and one of them almost, if you've read Culty by Mariana Zapata, it reminded me a little bit of that too because the guy who is like the Bergman brother in the book, like the series follows the Bergman siblings obviously, the guy that this one follows has always kind of worshipped this other guy as like his soccer idol and he's like so excited to finally meet him but when he does he's like super grumpy and doesn't want to do anything and it's just like cranky all the time and isn't exactly what he was hoping for but he is just so peppy and like annoying to this other guy but obviously they grow on each other. Like I said I absolutely love this book, it is such a good book definitely one of my favorites of the year. I haven't decided my top 10 favorites of the year yet but this one will definitely be on that list because I loved this book. Next is When Gracie Met the Grump by Mariana Zapata. This is obviously Mariana Zapata's newest release. I actually last year for Christmas asked for all of Mariana Zapata's backlist basically except for her first two books 
which were Lingus and Rhythm Chord and Malakin because I haven't heard the best things about those ones. Actually, I've seen most people give them like two stars. So I don't really have any interest in picking those up or owning them. So I didn't get those ones or ask for those ones, but you can see over here, my Mariana's Pod collection is getting bigger. And so this is her newest release, so I wanted to get it to add to the collection. I haven't read this one yet, but it is about a superhero, I believe, which is kind of cool. I really love like romances that are a little bit different and just like unique because I read so many of them. So I think that one will be interesting. Next is Credence by Penelope Douglas. For whatever reason, Penelope Douglas is one of those authors that I find I read a lot of their books, but I don't purchase a lot of them. I have Bully, Rival, and Punk 57, and that's it. And like Punk 57 isn't even one of my favorite Penelope Douglas books. Like Credence is 100% my favorite. And even Birthday Girl, I think I probably like more than Punk 57. So I'm finally going to get Credence. Hopefully I've got it on this list. Like I said, this is one that you'll see in that other video. But this is one that I read probably like a year or two ago now. And I absolutely loved one of my favorite books of all time. Just really, really enjoyed it. I love like a good cabin romance. Like I don't know what it is, but things set in like the woods in the winter is just like right up my alley. I love the cozy cabin atmosphere. And so I think that's what really did it for me with this book. I just really love the whole setting of where they were. And so hopefully this will be added to the collection this year as well. Next is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. The paperback for this has come out. So I want to get that to add to my collection. I didn't want to get the hardcover because I do have the box set of the paperbacks of the other books. So I didn't want to have like all paperbacks and then one random hardcover. So I waited until the paperback came out. I haven't read any of these books yet, but I know that books like this are generally cheaper to buy when they are released than it is to buy them later. So I would like to get this one as well. This is a really good one if you know someone is reading the series and doesn't have it. Obviously it would be a really good gift and like paperbacks are obviously cheaper too, which is nice. Next is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. This is probably, well, I was going to say this is my second favorite Mia Sheridan book, but I've only read three, so that's not really saying much. But I did really enjoy this book as well, so I do want to get a physical copy of it for my collection because my Archer's Voice book is getting kind of lonely because that is the only Mia Sheridan book I own. So I would like to get a physical copy of this one as well. And I feel like this is a good one if you know someone who read and loved Archer's Voice but hasn't read any other Mia Sheridan because like I feel like it's very much along sort of the similar lines to Archer's Voice. It's got a guy that's sort of more quiet and reserved and this one deals with a guy who was kidnapped as a child and has issues sort of being around people or being touched by people and so he goes to a strip club hoping to like pay a girl basically to see if he can even like get past it and that's sort of how the story starts is he ends up meeting one of these strippers at the strip club and it's just a really sweet book. I feel like it kind of doesn't sound like it but it just is and I really enjoyed this one so would like to get a physical copy. Next is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. This is such a good like YA book if you're looking for something for someone younger that's maybe just like dabbling in romance and is like you know like maybe like high school age or I don't know like does YA like is that like middle schoolers like I don't think they're reading YA are they? I don't know. But this book was so 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 good. I am very very picky with my YA books. I don't generally like a lot of them anymore. I find they're just not relatable and not even in the sense that like they're not relatable to me in my current point in life because obviously like I'm a lot older than a YA character would be but at the same time I find that they're not even relatable to me when I was that age. Like when I read these books about 15 year olds doing all this like crazy stuff I'm like okay I was not doing that at 15 and that's not you know how I was thinking at 15 or that's not how I felt at 15 but this book I've already read this one absolutely loved it gave it four and a half stars I think easily my favorite YA book I've ever read. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think the character in this was so me it wasn't even funny. Like I think if you gave this book to anyone that was actually in high school with me and told them to read it they would be like oh yep that was her because like literally me and this character were like the same people. I just really related to this on a level that I've never related to a YA book before so I thought it was a really good one. This one is about a girl who sort of fake dates her neighbor I guess and she's trying to get another guy's attention but obviously the neighbor sort of ends up becoming the love interest and it was just really sweet and like sort of that like age-old story of you know the girl going after the popular guy but ending up with the really sweet guy that is always there for her I guess 
And I just thought it was really, really cute. Like I said, really love this. Really good if you know someone who's into YA or is a bit on the younger side. Lynn Painter also has a new book coming out called The Do-Over, which is also on my list. I haven't read this one, but if it's anything like better than the movies, I will be obsessed with it. And I don't know much about this one, to be honest, because all I know is that it's the same author and that's all I really needed to know to know that I wanted to read it. And so again, if you know someone who read better than the movies and enjoyed it or someone who's into YA, this would be a good one. It is coming out in November or came out in November. So it's already like a newer book. So there's less chance that they may already own it. So that's another good one to go with. This is The Last Field Party by Abby Glines. This is the final book in her Field Party series. It's sort of like an epilogue book, I think. It just follows the epilogues of all of the couples from the first five or six books. So this is book number seven and it follows the epilogue of the six couples from those books. And so I'm excited to read this. It's like obviously one that I've been collecting. It's another YA series. Like I said, I am very picky with my YA. This one I haven't read in a while. I will say I haven't read the second last book in this series and I've been kind of scared to because I haven't been vibing with Abby Lines' stuff recently, but I did want to like finish off the collection regardless. So I have that on my list as well. Next is Stolen Air, the illustrated edition by Sophie Lark. This is her new, well they're not new, like they're her Brutal Birthright series, but they're being re like printed or republished. I guess not republished, but they're being reprinted with illustrations in them basically and they have new covers and I really really love the new covers and honestly I don't even really care all that much about the illustrations but I do love the new covers. I already bought Brutal Prince so I now just need Stolen Air. I actually think the next two have been released too but I probably won't even put those two on my list. Honestly I will probably just buy them myself if I can find a good deal on them somewhere maybe like on Boxing Day or something and so that is another one that is on my list because that's another collection that I want to build. Next is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the illustrated edition. This is just coming out this year. They have been releasing these books very, very slowly. I think, so there's four that have come out and I believe those ones all came out like every year, like one a year, like back to back. But there was definitely a two year gap, I think, between this one that's currently coming out, the Order of the Phoenix, and the last one. And I think it's just because it's the longest book in the series. It probably took them 10 times longer to illustrate it. And I can only imagine how giant this book is if they kept the entire Harry Potter story in it. Like I don't think they're like changing the story in these, they're just printing them with illustrations. They're very very large coffee table sized books. They are really really well done and like really good if you know a Harry Potter fan even if they don't have like the previous ones. Like it's I feel like they're like a good kind of gift like to get every year. They're usually at Costco for like $35-$40 dollars, so I feel like they're like a good gift price range even. like. And they're just really nice, even for kids, like if you have younger kids and you're wanting to introduce them to Harry Potter, I feel like these would be such a cool way to do it because they have all these like really, really beautiful, like full color illustrations in them. And I am just like kind of obsessed with these books. Like I, I know I will have these forever. Like I will have these when I have kids and like that will be like how I introduce them to the series. And I just really, really love them. And like I said, Costco usually gets these. So that's why it's on my list this year is because Costco only has things like when they're first released. So this came out this year so they should have it this year. Next is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace and this book I'm gonna be totally honest here I'm buying this just for the cover or like I'm asking for this just for the cover because I have not heard the best things about this. I know TikTok is obsessed with this book but every person I've seen that I actually like care about their reviews has given this like two stars or DNF'd it or like just didn't care and I feel like that's probably how I'm gonna feel to be honest which is kind of sad because I love the cover of this and I was really hoping to love it. I love even that the spine is pink like I just think the whole book is so pretty which is why I'm asking for it even though I just have this feeling I'm not gonna like it but I do think I'll keep it even if I don't like it because I do love the cover like I said. This is a like hockey figure skater college romance type thing. I've heard the most people's complaints with this book is that there's too many characters and you can't keep them all straight and it's very long and character driven like there's not a whole lot that happens you're just watching these people hang out which like I'm not opposed to but like I said a lot of people I've been seeing that I actually care about their opinions have been saying that they DNF'd this or they didn't like it or different things like that 
and I honestly don't really trust TikTok so I'm not anticipating loving this book but I do really want to own it. Next is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. This is the author of Still Beating and this is one of her other books. I believe this one follows, I think there's a mention of this character at the end of Still Beating who was like kidnapped or something as a kid and now they found him and like something like that. Like I don't know, I think it has something to do with the kidnapping. That's all I really know. And sort of similar to I guess Most of All You, which I was saying before is it follows a character who's kidnapped, but I think this one's a little bit darker just because of the lines that Still Beating took. I can sort of see how this would be a little bit darker and more like traumatic, I guess, like from the character's perspective, I guess. And so I'm excited to read this one. I've heard a lot of good things about it and I did really enjoy Still Beating, so I definitely would like to get a copy of this one. I've been trying to sort of increase my darker romance collection I guess. I've noticed I don't really buy a lot of dark romances and I think it's because they're all independently published and it's just very hard to get those books at a good price here and I did manage to get some during a sale that I shopped and like I said that will be the other unboxing. I don't know when that's going up but I find that they're just hard to get cheap here so I don't buy them and so this is one that is actually like semi reasonably priced here so I figured I'd put this on my list and maybe start building my collection. I also like don't like putting anything with like really crazy covers on my Christmas list because like I don't want to like put that on there and then my aunts have to like go buy that or like my dad has to order it on Amazon like I just don't want to do that. So I try to pick books for my Christmas list that have you know like vague covers or like illustrated covers or just like things that they're not gonna look at and cringe <laughs> sort of thing. So I try to be like mindful of that and like obviously a lot of dark romances have covers that are very sort of out there and I just like I'm not opposed to owning those books but like I want to buy them myself I guess. And then we also have Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. I wanted to start collecting QB Tyler's books because honestly she's one of my favorite authors. I've loved every single book I've read from her. I've given either four or five stars. Absolutely love them and I just don't own any of them because they're all on Kindle Unlimited so that's been where I've been reading them but I would love to own all of them honestly. But this one, again, with the covers, this was the one that I thought had, like, the most, like, decent cover that I could put on the list that, like, I was like, okay, that's not weird. Whereas, like, the rest are, like, literally half-naked people, and I was like, yeah, not so much for that. But I will eventually buy those myself. Hopefully I can get a good deal on those, too. Then I also have A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy and the book that goes before it, because I know this is, like, the second book, I think, and I have both on my wish list. This one I don't know a ton about. I want to say that I've heard the first one is a bully romance, but I don't know that that's 100% true. But I do want to read these. I've seen these around a lot. I think the covers are gorgeous. I love them. And these also, I think, just got picked up by a publisher, so they're a lot cheaper now which is nice as well. And lastly, I have the Vampire Academy box set on my wish list. This is on sale right now, really cheap, and so I've just sort of threw it on my list because I want to watch the show that just came out, and I've heard a lot of good things about the series too, but I didn't want to watch the show until I'd read the books. So I put this on my list. If I don't get it, I'll probably just end up getting them from the library. But because the box set was on such a good deal, I did throw it on the list with, like, the deal. Like, I tend to, I put, like, little side notes on my Christmas list, like, this is on sale at Costco, or, like, this is on sale on Amazon, or whatever. So, because, like, I hate, like, putting things on my list and knowing people might pay, like, full price somewhere when they can get it cheaper. So I literally, like, put notes being, like, don't buy this if it's over $60, like, different things. And so this one is one that I have, like, a little note beside it being, like, only buy if it's under $60, because... It's like regular almost $100 for this box set, which is insane, but it's on sale on Amazon right now for $58. So that's like a lot more reasonable to me for six books, like that's not terrible. And so like I said, I would really like to read this. This would be another good one, I feel like. I don't know if these are YA. I would think because they're in like a CW show that they would be sort of YA-ish. Like I would say high school age for sure, but I'm excited to read them. I've heard a lot of good things. Like I said, I haven't heard anyone really trash this series. And I definitely had like my Twilight phase and I haven't read a lot of vampires since then but I would like to. So I definitely hope that I get these. If I don't I may just buy them myself. But that's probably what will happen with all of these books. If I don't get them I'll eventually just purchase them myself. But that is everything for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm currently doing new book videos every single day and I will see you next time. Bye.